Hello everyone. Today I'm talking about corbel design. That is a critical element in transferring the crane load to a safe foundation through the elements under the corbel or through the corbel to column. So we're dealing with in general with big loads and we need to make sure that the corbel is safe and it is transferring safe load to the column and column is performing safe to transfer the load to the safe foundation. So it is critical and if we have any unsafe design, it may have big effects on the structure. This is the general shape for corbel. We have column and some extension to, to that column to, take, to have some seat for crane rail and getting that one taking that load and transferring to the column. In general, for design, we need to have the shape of this corbel and also reinforcement for tension and compression side. We have about 10 parameters to be considered. A is the distance from the center of load to the edge of the column. V star, that is applied load on the corbel. And generally, it is applied on the pad. And for this case, it should be always factored load because we're going to design for ultimate limit state as strength, strength limit state. Now, load should be factored loads, combination of self weight of the crane, rail, and the load transferring under that, including all considerations we, ha we have for crane design. Next one is D, that is depth of reinforcement. T tension, tension reinforcement or tie bars to the edge of this corbel. D is total depth of, or capital D is total depth of corbel from top to edge to this extension edge. FSY is yield strength of reinforcement. F dash C is concrete ten compression strength. AST is reinforcement for tension bars. ASC is reinforcement for compression bar here. Just remember, we in general, we may need or we may not need for this part as strut is taken by the combination of concrete and reinforcement here. And if concrete is strong enough to take that compression load, we may ignore reinforcement for compression. But in general, we should have reinforcement in all parts for feasibility and at least for shrinkage control. And after all, we have BW or that is width of the corbel here that I've shown here and just 3D 3D dimensions here or 3D showing here just V star A and D this is column and this is corbel so from strut and tie you know that the corbel is designed on the basis of strut and tie action from strut action strut and tie action we will have T or tie in this area and compression or strut on this area. From triangle relation, we have T or tension bar, tension load, V star on over tangent theta. Theta is the angle between strut and tie here. So it should be phi ASFSY. Phi is reduction factor for tension bar. That is in Australian code is 0 0.8, but you, you need to refer to your applied code or just national code for your own design. ASFSY is area of reinforcement and yield strength of reinforcement. So from that equation, we may we can find reinforcement area here for tension. For strut part, we will have phi STCU, phi STBS, 0.9 F dash C AC. AC is concrete area. F dash C is concrete compressive. B is BS is the performance of the strut part or and CU is the compression capacity. Phi ST is reduction for compression that is in Australian code is 0 0.6 and still you need to refer you to your own code. And for beta is we using this equation that is in general simple but it should be limited between 0 0.3 and 1. If it's going over or under this limit we should have the limit for that one. And just note that I've written all these parameters here because in general we are not 
designing for corbel. Sometimes we have the corbel and we need to find out or work out what's the maximum capacity we need we can put on this one. So we need to go other way. So we will have D, capital D, A, and we need to work out what is V star can be applied. We have two big checkpoints for this one for Corbell design. The first one is V star on BWD. That should be less than 0 0.56 radical F dash C. And the second one that's coming from ACI 18, 0 0.8, it should be just updated. Uh, just you may, you may go for the most recent versions of this code. And for that one, A over D should be uh, under one, or A should be less than one always. That is, that makes sense. And 0, 0, 0 0.04 F dash C over F S Y should be less than A S on B W D. That should be less than 0 0.2 F dash C F S Y. Still, I note that this is old code and there might be some changes in these equations and parameters. And just remember here, for the depth of this straight part, we're always going to have at least half of this d value. The best is just going to have half half, but anyway, you need to go just more than half of d for that straight part. So for design, this is just work example. We have V star 500 kilonewton, that is design load or factored load based on the combination of dead load, uh, dead load, live load, and any other load that applicable. And A value is here 400, or the center of the load to the edge of column is 400 mil. And the pad is 200 by 300. Under the rail, under the, um, the point load. And BW is width of the corbel is 300. And we need to work out what is the reinforcement for tension for compression, what is D value, small d and capital D. And we have this input data as well, F dash C is 32 MPA, FSY 500 and cover is 30 mil. So we have almost all parameters we need for to start from that 10 parameters and we can work for what is theta value, what is small d, capital D and tension bar and compression bar we need. So here, this is just the concept that is tension side and compression side, and that is compression or strut part. It is just bursting part, and we after we found theta value, we can work out on this width of the compression side as well for to make sure that everything is safe. So based on the input data we had, the first check should be V star over BWD should be less than 0 0.6 radical F dash C. And from this equation, we can find what is the initial D value or depth of tensile, tensile reinforcement that is coming here, 5, 2, 6. And here, 1,000 times multiple is just the transferring kilonewton to newton to have all units in newton and millimeter. And 526 mil is the first assumption for D value. And for total depth of the corbel, that is D plus cover, that is 30 mil here, and half bar diameter because the cover is always taken from the center of that bar, so half bar diameter. If we assume that the bar diameter is 20, so it will be D575, and we can round it to 570. So D value should be 530 millimeter to start. That is a good start from the total depth and assumptions we need to start the equation. Uh, so from that geometry, tangent theta, that is theta is the angle between stra and tie. We can work out from this equation that is just triangle equation. So we can have theta is 47.7 degree. And from that, we can work out the area of tensile reinforcement from the equation that we had before. And it gives us 1138 squared mil. So we can make it 
4 and 20, that comes 1240 squared mil. That is bigger than 1135, that's fine. So the next check should be AS on BW, that is 0075, that should be less than 0122 F-C, uh, it is checked here. So for strut efficiency factor or beta s, we're going to have, we have theta value, so we can have beta s, that's coming 0.65 here. We can put that beta s value in strut calculation. This is the reduced capacity, compression capacity of the concrete, 0 0.6, 0 0.65, 0 0.9, 32 MPA, 8115, that's coming from the equation, and after all, we can see that the reduced capacity of the compression concrete is 911 kilonewton. And from the equation for strut and tie here, if you had tie, strut, and theta, and that is V star, from this equation, we can have C star is V star on over cosine S theta, that is 443. So the applied load is 473, and the capacity for the concrete that in that area is 911. So it is the concrete itself is okay to take that compression load in strut area. And we don't need reinforcement in that area, but remember we always need to put the minimum reinforcement area, at least for shrinkage, and also for feasibility of tie bars in that corbel area. So the last part here is reinforcement design. For reinforcement design, we have in general two connections for this corner bar. We need this corner bar to distribute the moments in the corbel side. It should be, it can be just normal extension, a normal extension of this bar at the edge or welding this bar to the tie bars. It's been shown here on the plan as well. So we have corner bar or crossbar or just anchor bar welded or just crossing under this edge to have distribution of this or and also to have crack control and distribution of the bending in the corbel. So always remember the best idea to have this area or to this break of the corbel Corbel, I mean, the dimension should be just half half. That is ideal. I just always remember this area should be at least half of this tensile reinforcement depth. So these are 3 and 12 for S drops that is connecting all column bars and the extension of tie bars here. And for this area, because we need tie bar here but we need to extend it to have development and make sure that the tension is working because in general we have big tension bars and we may need to have big loads for development bar. For development length, for let's say for N20, it should be, from experience, should be around one meter. But anyway, it is still depending on the cover length and just the location of the bars and too many parameters, including concrete strength and FSY if it is just going to be, and the shape of the bending of the bar always affecting the development length. Anyway, you need to work out on this one. And you need to supply these stirrups. And for the edge bar, you can weld it or you can just cross it here. If you just going to weld it, it should be the plan. Uh, I'm going to show more details in the next step, how to weld, how to have just satisfactory welding. And last page here. For design side, so we had strut and tie, tie section, strut section, and we're going to have this tie bar, and we're going to have just one continuous bar for that one to have mainly for a continuity and integration of the bars, and also we need to have strut, the bars in strut area, we don't need reinforcement, but anyway, we have reinforcement for to cover or for shrinkage control. And we have stirrups in between to tie and transfer the shear because we will have shear transfer and we need all these stirrups. And for this case, that is this crossbar is welded, we will have this edge 
welding details. This is just two wheels, one for this tie bar. From two different views, uh, anyway, and this is the primary, primary and crossbar. And for we will have weld thickness and weld length. And weld thickness is just recommended to ha to be half of dB or bar diameter, and length is recommended to be three quarters of db or bar diameter in top and bottom so if you just follow this welding detail it should be satisfactory weld details for corbel so the corbel is not is critical element but very simple design just make sure that you have taken all considerations and everything is correct and you have to most first of all you have applied load in combination of factor loads or factor load that is designed for ultimate strength and also I always say that here put some safety factor in addition to the safety factor that codes need because it is critical element and you need to make sure that everything is safe thanks for watching see you